the spleen. The spleen is the size of the subject's hand, the normal spleen. So I hope that my spleen is the size of this specimen here that fits beautifully into the palm of my hand. It's got a concave surface that looks forward into the abdominal viscera, which we'll see in a few moments. And it's got a convex surface that lies against the diaphragm. Its upper border has got a distinct notch. And when I was a student, we were taught that you can diagnose an enlarged spleen because you can feel the notch on it. Well, that, of course, is absolute rubbish. And in a long clinical lifetime, I've never felt a notch on an enlarged spleen. That's, 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 that's a fairy tale. Before you can feel an enlarged spleen, the spleen has got to be at least three times normal size. So put three of those spleens together and you'd be able to feel it. And this specimen here, which is a spleen in a patient with leishmaniasis, uh, would certainly have been palpable. You see, in fact, it's one, two, three. It's rather bigger than the three handfuls of spleen uh, which designate that they will, it'll be palpable. Now, interestingly, when the spleen enlarges, it displaces itself downwards immediately under the anterior abdominal wall. On the other hand, an enlarged left kidney pushes the abdominal viscera in front of it because it's retroperitoneal, as we'll see later on in another presentation. That means that if you have a large mass in the left upper quadrant and it's dull to percussion, you put your money on that being an enlarged spleen. If there's this large mass in the left upper quadrant and it's resonant to percussion, put your money on an enlarged left kidney and you'll usually be right. 